We are here today with Dr. Carlos Montenegro, and we are talking about hernias here on Healthy Living in Coastal Carolina. It's a beautiful day. I thank you very much for joining us. This is fun when I finally can have you captive and ask you all the questions I think, not just for myself, mm -hmm. but many of us really want to know. And I really am excited about talking about hernias because I've heard the name, I've heard hernias in children and hernias in adults and men and women, and I really would like to know a little bit of hernia basics, if we could go through that. Okay, uh, nice to see you again, yeah. Betty, and um, thanks for coming here. Um, well, hernias, uh, essentially, let's start with the definition, is just the protrusion of uh, something through a, its containment. Okay, in this case, abdominal wall would be the containment. Okay. And things pushing through would be the intestine, abdominal fat that could get caught in the opening. Mm -hmm. These openings, uh, especially in men, they are kind of natural, but over time, due to exercise, coughing, uh, uh, difficulties urinating, or constipation, these natural openings that are very small could enlarge. Okay. And also, if the patient's gain weight, those openings are going to become larger oh, because then, it, yeah. because the abdominal wall stretches mm -hmm. as we gain weight. And then these openings get bigger and the intestine or other organs inside could start Slips coming through. through that. And at some point the, the, the bowel, the intestine may get caught outside. Okay. And that's a big emergency. Okay, so so, so in, are there symptoms initially that you would feel or is it something that in a regular um, physical, the doctor would palpitate for to see if you might have them? Uh, usually there are no symptoms initially. Um, you can feel a little lump, like okay. in the belly button, a little pro oh. protuberance of the belly button. Is and that where they usually are? Some of them are in the belly button, okay. umbilical hernias. Others uh, in, in men, mostly we have the inguinal hernias. And what is that? A growing hernia, okay. and that's where the testicle comes down from the abdomen, from the abdomen to the scrotum. Okay. And that leaves a little tract that over time could enlarge and cause all these problems. Um, other hernias, if patients have had operations before, sometimes that weakens the abdominal wall and hernias start coming through the incision for a previous operation. Mm -hmm. We call those incisional hernias. Okay. I was, I was going to say, am I going to be feeling symptoms? Am I feeling discomfort sometimes, or pain? Sometimes you can feel a little pain, especially when something is protruding through that opening and it doesn't want to go back in place. Okay. It'll become very tender and sometimes the area where the hernia is will become red and swollen mm -hmm. and even darker as the, the, the situation progresses. So it's not really a disease, it's really a mechanical kind of thing. It's a mechanical, essentially mechanical because it's either excessive coughing, sneezing, straining to go to the bathroom, okay. straining to urinate, lifting. So it's, a lot it's of literally putting that kind of pressure on. I never thought about weight lifting, but that makes sense. Well, yeah, because you, you uh, in, engage your core, core to do the lifting and then everything wants to come out through anything. Through anything uh, that where there's a, a small there's a hole. hole, yeah. It mm -hmm. makes sense. And women get hernias too. too. Yeah, Again. less than men because, because the ovaries why? staying inside. Okay. So they don't create the strut for the mm -hmm. hernias. But they do get femoral hernias, which are a little lower. Okay, femoral hernia? Uh -huh. Okay. In the upper thigh. Yes. They also get umbilical hernias. Okay. And, and hiatal hernias are more prevalent in women than in men. And now what's the hiatal one again? Hiatal, hiatal is in the diaphragm, okay. which is the other muscle that separates the abdomen from the chest. And there is a natural opening for the esophagus. Mm -hmm. But if there is any of these circumstances, we mentioned coughing, straining, gaining weight, the opening gets bigger and the esophagus starts moving up and pulls the stomach. Through up it. through here, so the through stomach's here. actually going and going into the chest. Is that where I would I feel reflux or GERD or uh, what would I what would be? Patients have a lot of acid reflux, regurgitation, and a lot of chest pain on, on okay. occasions. That could be the the leading uh, um, symptom in that situation. How do you find 
the hernias, number one. And number two, again, is this something for a primary care doctor? Do they come to you? At what point do you get involved in the process? Uh, usually the, the patients will go and see the primary doctor complaining of GERD, GERD right. in the case of hiatal hernia, or the presence of a lump, okay. or pain in the groin, or things like that. And then the primary doctor can examine them and find this uh, complaints or order a test, okay. like a CAT scan, sometimes ultrasound could help. So you could actually see actually it if it's... See the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there degrees of severity to hernias where some might be just live with it and keep, keep an eye on it as opposed to, like you said, the emergency? Uh, yeah, there have been uh, different schools of thought about this situation, especially with inguinal hernia in men. Mm -hmm. There are some surgeons who recommend observation. Okay. Others, I'm in the others. Yeah, and you're in the hernia. others, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't like uh, to see hernias because I've seen the consequences of watching them. Sometimes people come with a bowel that is twisted inside the hernia, and then it's not just a simple operation of a hernia. Now we have to cut bowel. We can't fix the, the hernia properly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's a lot more complicated. There have been studies of the other side that just watch the hernias and mm -hmm. see how they go over time. Many won't require an operation, but one or two that require a, an emergency operation, I don't think it's a justification to just not fix it. It's, it's uh, because I was raised, my dad's doctors, and it's always tissue is the issue. If you can see it and you can fix it fairly easily, why, why, why wait, wait until right, it is until an emergency? Mm -hmm. And if it's an emergency, what are the symptoms that I w that would... Oh, severe pain. Okay. Then there will be severe pain, bowel obstruction, Ooh. usually patients are vomiting. Yeah. And sometimes, uh, we do have a large population of obese patients, sometimes they come vomiting and then the CAT scan will tell us, oh, there is a hernia, and there is a piece of bowel mm -hmm. in the hernia, and it's blocking the, the upper strain. So. I know in the second part of our show, we're gonna talk about the TIF operations, but I'd like to talk a little bit about um, treatment options for different kinds of hernias mm -hmm. here at Coastal Carolina. Okay, um, I'm also a believer of minimally invasive surgery, so anything that can be done with little openings, um, I like to repair hernias that way. Mm -hmm. the, the first descriptions of repairing hernias were with open surgery, so incisions of about uh, three inches okay. in, in the groins mm -hmm. to repair about two, three inches in the umbilicals to repair the umbilical hernia. And is the goal to just kind of push it back in and... Push back in, sew it, up. sew it up. In the beginning it was only that, but then they realized the hernias come back. Oh. So they started putting mesh. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Or to reinforce the abdominal wall. And then when laparoscopy came, came around, then the minimal invasive techniques. We do the same repairs, but wrong inside, little scars outside, okay. and we achieve better results, actually. And is it better results, meaning that the um, healing time is less, that the pain is less, or just the chance of infection? The chances of infection are less because the incisions are small. The chances of the hernia coming back are small because the incisions are small. Um, less time to recovery, even though the healing probably is about the same time. Okay. But you can recover faster from these little incisions. Which makes sense. Than a bigger incision. So patients usually with laparoscopic surgery, they go back to work in about two weeks, oh, sometimes they really? sooner if they don't do lifting. Mm -hmm. Usually with um, open surgery, we recommend the patients to do, don't do any lifting for about uh, six, six weeks. weeks. Yeah, I wondered about so that. Two weeks to six weeks. and That's a big, that's a month a difference. difference. Right, especially and if you're working and you have to sustain your family and all that. You know, we're talking about the demographics of people who get this. Is there an age that that you get these commonly? Or is it just based on all of these other factors? It's pretty much based on, on that because we have young populations, so young yeah. young people come with inguinal hernias, some umbilical hernias, and then the older population. The with the obesity. Uh, urinating, okay. we do see a lot of hernias with uh, uh, older uh, gentlemen that mm -hmm. need, have problems with the prostate mm -hmm. usually. And then women, 
and also these people that uh, have all these factors that are going to make things come through the abdominal wall more easily. When someone comes in for treatment and you do the <coughs> actual procedure, what is the follow-up care? What are the restrictions, if any, and, and what does the recovery really look like? Uh -huh. Depending on the on the type of operation, then, uh, like I said, laparoscopic surgery about two weeks, and people are pretty much ready to do all the anything they can do. Okay, and they can go back to their lifting and doing lifting all of that kind. Of. We're going to take a break and come back, and I really want to talk about the TIF. I'm curious about that, and I think a lot of other people are. So stay with us here on Healthy Living. We'll be right back. <laughs> 